Pastor Cooper here, and welcome to our church online experience with Cheney Faith Center. Um, we're glad you're joining with us, and we're going to be continuing on in our Christ Over Corona series. I'm actually preaching um, a little bit later on. I'm talking about why we love the church and how this is a time where we can um, be refocused on what the church is as we start to phase back in to meeting as a church body, which is pretty exciting. And so as a little shout out, this week Pastor Mark gave a email about our mission and our strategy um, for phasing in as a church into our large group gatherings. And so I'm not going to comment much on it right now because I want you to read that email. It's on our website. It's on our social media. We texted it out earlier. We emailed it out. So so please read that. And um, just so you can have an understanding of where we're coming from and where the Holy Spirit is leading us um, in this time, which is very, very exciting. I just want to say that. So um, right now we're going to do a little digital greeting time. So if you are doing a watch party right now with someone, say hello to them like, hey, what's up? drink your coffee, whatever it is. Um, if you're still at home, just with your family or just with your roommates, whatever it is, um, text someone. Text someone that you've been missing seeing from church. Uh, just say hello, like happy Sunday, whatever it is. Um, just digitally greet someone. It's also a reminder that um, to partner with us financially, you can do that as well in three different ways. That's online, uh, by mailing your gift, or by texting um, to give as well. And so I want to just say again, thank you so, so much for worshiping Jesus with your finances as well, that you have put him over it all. And so thank you so much for that. And um, we are very, very grateful and thankful for your generous hearts and how you've continued to bless um, our church and bless our community with your financial giving. So we're gonna go to our time of digital greeting in about 30 seconds. And I have one really exciting, important thing that we are launching uh, next week. So stay tuned. Welcome back from our church digital greeting time. And I want to take a few moments to share about a great opportunity that we have upcoming starting next Sunday, June 7th, and that is called Parking Lot Prayer. You might be thinking like, what is this and why are we doing this? Well, let me explain a few things. We believe that as we start to phase in back to our large group gatherings, we want to be intentional in our first steps. One of those intentional things is that we are contending in prayer together as a church family, as the body of Christ. That we can still connect during this time, but that we are contending in prayer for one another, for our church, for our communities, that we're starting off with prayer. So on Sundays from 9 to 11 a.m., at CFC's church parking lot. Come join us, connect with us. We're gonna be there, the staff will be there, some people from our prayer team will be there to pray together, to contend in prayer. Now let me explain just a few of the details and what to expect. So as you drive in, find a parking space. If you would want to, you could stay in your car, just flip your hazards on. That lets us know that you wanna stay in your car. We'll come to you and pray with you and have a conversation with you and just connect, but also pray together and pray for you. Or if you would like, you can get out of your car. We're gonna be wearing our face masks. Uh, we're gonna also be sure that we have lots of hand sanitizer and some hand washing areas. Cause we wanna make sure that we are clean during this time. So you can expect us to be face masked up and we encourage you to do the same. Um, but we're, we would love to pray with you, to connect with you um, during this time. And we're going to do this for a number of weeks, just leading into as we phase into our large group gatherings. And we believe, again, as part of our core values, as we creatively connect, as we own our faith, that we contend in prayer. So that's what we're doing right now. We're being intentional in this, in this time to contend in prayer for one another. Since we're now allowed to do this a little bit more freely in our phase two um, setup within our state guidelines. And we believe it'll be a great time to just get back into the habit and the rhythm 
of church on Sunday as well. And let me just say, I'm really looking forward to seeing a lot of you there. Um, I'm looking forward to praying with you and just, just being with you in a physical space. And so we also understand that not everybody will join us and that's okay. And that's why we're doing this multiple Sundays in a row. And you're able to come every Sunday, by the way. Um, but we wanna just allow an opportunity for you to come to the church, to be with people and to contend in prayer. So starting next Sunday, June 7th, from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m., parking lot prayer. We hope to see you there. It's going to be fun and it's going to be very simple. We're just literally praying and connecting. There's going to be no other uh, things involved and we want to just be really intentional that we are going to be a church that starts off in prayer. Amen? Amen. Well, with that, I'm going to pray for us um, into our time of worship um, and then uh, I actually have the message today later and then you'll hear from me a little bit later. So, all right. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for your love and for your joy that you give us all through your Holy Spirit. Lord, uh, open our hearts and our minds during this time. And um, Jesus, we just give you all the glory. Amen. Amen. All right, let's worship. Good day, CFC Online. Glad we come together and worship. But I'll be looking forward to when we can worship together real soon, face to face. worship our King. Come let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You free every captive, break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God, you have done great things. been faithful through every storm. You'll be faithful forevermore. You have done great things. And we know you will do it again. For your promise is yes and amen. You will do great things. You will do great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You free every captive, break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God, you have done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, 
you conquered the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. Oh God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh Jesus, our Savior, name lifted high. Oh God, you have done great things. Hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You free every captive, break every chain, oh God. You have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Jesus, our Savior, name lifted high, oh God. You have done great things. Kingdoms will bow down And every chain will break As broken hearts declare His praise Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion The Lion of Judah He's roaring with power Fighting our battle, every knee will bow before him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sin of the world. His blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Oh, every knee will bow before him. Open up. So open up the gates, make way before the King her King. Our God who comes to save is here to set the captives free. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. Roaring with power and fighting our battle, and every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sin of the world. His blood breaks the chain, and every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Oh, every knee will bow. Lion and the land, who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Tell me who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Tell me who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? And who can stop the Lord? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow. Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sin of the world. His blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before. 
chance when I stand in your love. When I stand in your love, my fear, my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. When I'm standing in your love.
Happy birthday! Yes! You're probably thinking, happy birthday? What is Pastor Cooper talking about? Today is Pentecost Sunday. It is the celebration of when the church started, like when we essentially opened up as a church almost 2,000 years ago. And so we're the church. The body of Christ is the church. And so happy birthday to you all. It's a celebration, right? So it's Pentecost Sunday. And um, again, as a reminder, it was an amazing event of when the disciples, the apostles, those who were with Jesus, they were asked to wait. So Jesus had died. He rose again. He came back to life and he hung out with the disciples, chatted with them and said, hey, in a few weeks, be ready. The Holy Spirit's going to come upon you and then you are going to be empowered to go outwardly and share the good news of who I am and what I have done and how I'm going to set people free and give them hope. And that's what happened, right? And man, if you read about it in Acts chapter 1 and 2 and just the whole scene, it's one of those places where I would love to be there. If you ever ask that question like, where would you want to be in any time of history? And one of the places I'd want to be would be this moment, almost 2,000 years ago, where the disciples are in this upper room, and I'm sure they are tired. I'm sure they're still very emotional because their best friend had passed away. It's only been, um, you know, about seven weeks or so, and they're just still processing a lot of stuff. And then all of a sudden, what is described in God's Word is a violent wind rushes in and just sets the place on fire with the Holy Spirit. And then they go outwardly and they start um, sharing the good news in many different languages. And everybody's kind of like, what is going on? But what we see, what we read in scripture is many people um, come to know who Jesus is and the church right there starts and it happens. And I love that. And so this Pentecost Sunday is actually going to play well into our conversation this morning within our Christ over Corona series because the church is strong regardless of of outside circumstances. It has been going strong for thousands of years. And these moments of not being physically together should actually help us reflect on how much that we love the meeting together as a church family. What we saw on Pentecost Sunday is the church was no longer reserved to one single physical space, like the temple. It was now, boom, wide open, and the church is now us as a people living outwardly the good news of Jesus Christ. And so what is so cool is the church has yet to close. Since that has happened on Pentecost Sunday, through all of the history, the ups and the downs, it has yet to to close and we're still open right the church is still moving the church is still doing things and we are still preaching the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ outwardly to our world and to our culture so now I believe thinking about Pentecost Sunday but also in relation to our Christ over Corona series this should give us empowerment and encouragement that Christ is over Corona that his truth is bigger than our circumstances that are dealt to in the various forms that we have. And like the early church, I believe this is a moment that will catalyze the church, Big C Church, in being formed back to the intentional heart of Jesus of what church means. It doesn't mean specific programs or a building or this or that, but it means a people. People gathered in various contexts of all sizes, of all styles, but centered on following Jesus and living for him daily. So today we're going to talk about how the coronavirus should allow us some time to think, and we should be taking advantage of this time to reflect and think how we love the church and how the church that's made up of people, and how it's shaped a lot of who we are and how we long for our large group gatherings, but the church is bigger than our large group gatherings. It's a collective of people focused on the main goal of going forth to make disciples of all nations and baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now right now, I know there's lots of different thoughts and opinions and perspectives about the when, what, why, how of when churches should come back together in the physical sense of a large group gathering. And we as pastors have heard lots of thoughts and considerations, which we definitely appreciate. 
uh, about when we should reopen and just the different thoughts and things like that. But here's something that I want to remind us all, just, just two quick things. Number one, the church has never closed. God has continued to use the church, which is us as people, in very powerful ways. And though our physical building may not be open right now, the church has never closed. But secondly, when someone shares an opinion or a thought or a perspective, our heart is to seek to understand. Seek to hear where their heart is coming from and how the Holy Spirit is leading them in that moment. If we seek to understand, we are modeling a humble heart, but we are modeling godly wisdom that is peaceful. And that's something I want to encourage us as, um, as Christ followers, that we seek to understand. We don't try to refute right away or say this or that or try to call out, but that we seek to understand the global perspective and what is happening and that we can just have that humble heart because that is what God calls us to do. And I think it'll also preach very boldly to our world where they see the church sometimes as a bunch of hypocrites. Like you preach about love and unity, but you're fighting all the time. And this could be an opportunity where the church could be really, really fighting um, about differences of opinions of when and how um, we should open or whatever. But I believe if we seek to understand, we will model to the world that, hey, we might have different opinions, but we're going to allow Christ to be above it all. We're going to be united under that banner and realize that some people might do it differently, and that is okay. And we'll allow the Holy Spirit to lead them in the bounds of Scripture with what is best for their context. And on a side note as well, um, this week Pastor Mark wrote an all-church email, and we have it posted on our website, on our social media, but about our vision and strategy moving forward as a church in kind of some of the new guidelines within phase two of our state and even what the president has said, that church is essential. And so I want to encourage you to read that email. I'm not going to comment on it right now because I want you to read the full thing. It's on our website. It's on social media. We emailed it out. Spend about five or ten minutes to read through that thing to really, again, seek to understand our heart and the, where, where, where we believe the Holy Spirit is leading us as a church body within our mission um, forward. Sorry, thought I heard a bear come out of the woods. <laughs> but it was just a leaf that fluttered. Continuing on. <laughs> um... Well, during this time of modified church gatherings, and for us, it's been online, like we're watching this right now um, at YouTube, uh, it has caused me to reflect and do some soul searching as a, as a pastor and as, as a Christ follower. Um, and I love our church gatherings, but I, I was drawn time and time again to the early church. And we're talking about Pentecost Sunday a little bit, and I was drawn to their model and their example of what church is and how they lived that out in their context. So we're going to kind of be drawn on um, those examples a lot in today's message about we love the church, but also to be reminded of some of the core principles of what church is. And so before we do that, I want to go ahead and just pray. Lord Jesus, thank you so much that we have your word, that we have your Holy Spirit to, to guide us and to give us truth in every context, in every circumstance of life. So Lord God, open our hearts and our minds this morning or this afternoon or tonight when we're watching this um, to just be led by you, to be encouraged by you, and to be challenged by you. Lord, we give you all the glory, we give you all the power and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. So as we dive into our conversation, um, there was a few things that I was reminded of when I was reading through Acts and just looking at the early church and some other letters of Paul. And I was reminded of a few things, and I'm going to have these listed throughout my message so you don't have to write them down right now because I'm going to come back to them. But here's what they are, and it's that we are the church, the body of Christ. We, people, are the church. That God's Spirit is what changes people. And thirdly, we need to be in awe of the church, in awe of what God is doing through the body of Christ. Now, I believe this helps us know that Christ is over Corona because it's his truth and his example that we follow, not man's. Seeing the church thrive throughout history 
gives us hope that Christ is bigger than the external changes because he is eternal and he is hope. So that first point, um, this time of quarantine should remind us, remind ourselves that we are the church. The church does not live or die on the ability for a building to be open or not. It's based on us and our dependence on the Holy Spirit. We are called to continue to live out our calling to create disciples of all nations regardless of the space we have or don't have. More and more I've heard stories and even experienced it myself within my neighbors that people are open to spiritual conversations. They're open to talking about the hard questions of life because this situation that we're in has forced us to look at those questions that we don't love to look at about what happens when I die and what does this all mean? What does my life mean? And so we as humans are now more open to these conversations. <clears throat> and I believe that Jesus provides a lot of these answers, if not every single answer, because people may be looking for an answer that they think they need, but Jesus truly is the answer that they do need. I was reminded of Peter in the early church, and this is in Acts chapter 3. Um, he's, he's walking around and he approaches an area by the temple where there's a lot of people who are begging for money. They might be disabled or lame or just not able to function in society. And he's approached by a, a, a lame beggar. And he says, like, give me some money, give me some money. And Peter looks down at him and he doesn't answer his question. And the question is like, can you help me like with some money? He says, gold and silver I don't have, but right now get up in the name of Jesus and walk. See, Peter, through the Holy Spirit, gave the answer that gentleman needed. It wasn't that, here's some money, I'll help you right now in this moment. It was what you really need is some hope. What you really need is a miracle in your life. And that's what I believe is going to happen throughout this time as we start to phase in and as churches are moving and grooving and even right now in quarantine as we can kind of go out and be with groups of five or less, that we can start having those conversations where people might be looking for an answer that they want, but really what they're looking for is hope. What they're looking for is the freedom that Jesus brings. So as we live out our faith and model what being the church is in our context, we also need to trust in God's spirit to lead and open those doors. Open those doors with our friends and our family and our neighbors. When we trust the Holy Spirit's leading, we will see amazing things happen. Now, we need to make it consistent, right? We make it consistent, just like any type of skill or hobby. The more you do it, the more regular that you make this happen, the more you become comfortable with it, but the more that you grow in that as well. And so when it comes to living our faith outwardly, because we are the church and we go outwardly, the more we do it, the more we become comfortable with it. What we see in the early church is they lived their faith out 24-7. It wasn't just a, let's meet up on a Sunday in a little gathering, and then we're good. They met up every single day and they lived it out every single day. Whenever they were walking through the markets and through the different areas, they were had a lifestyle that they were the church. They were the image bearers of Christ. And what I was interesting kind of reading about this is within that culture, um, within the, even like the Greek Roman culture, which a lot of it was shaped too, was religious groups or cult groups or whatever it might be, they only met about once a month. If they were super like dedicated, it was like three or four times a month. But this group, the early church, early Christians, they met every single day. So they were already separating themselves from what the cultural norm was. And they were saying like, hey, we're going to do this the right way because this is a lifestyle change. This is what has shaped us. And so we're going to live this out every single day of our life no matter what the context is, no matter if we have a building or not, we're going to live our faith outwardly. See, being the church is a lifestyle and it moves in every context that we live in. Being the church is a lifestyle and it moves in every context that we live in. Uh, Mark Batterson is a pastor in Washington, D.C. and he's an author. And we've actually done a study from one of his books called The 40-Day Prayer Challenge. And even recently, uh, his youth pastor, Brooke Perry, spoke at our church 
Um, Brooke Perry's dad planted Cheney Faith Center back in the early 80s. She came back and spoke, and it was amazing. And she had a very timely word for us. And But she mentioned something interesting that I was like, wow, that's I love that thought, was um, every Sunday, Mark Batterson of their church, um, they have a church of about 11,000 people. He always mentions that they have 11,000 church plants in the greater Washington, D.C. area because he believes that every Sunday when they leave the church building, that's when church really starts. They are planting churches. They are being the church in every context that the church body is living in. And it kind of is a weird thought to think that like we're all the church, but that's a very normal thought to have. It's a very biblical sound thought to have that Whenever we're, wherever we're at, we are the church. We are representing the image of Christ to a world that is searching for Jesus. So during this, this time, like I said, I've been reflecting and having questions that I've just been praying through and thinking on. And, and one of the things that I've asked myself a lot in even being a pastor and not having like a physical church to go to and see people, it's caused a lot of reflection but it was this question is, how am I being the church? How am I being the church? And when we ask ourselves that question, it should cause us to reflect of like, what have our thought life, what, or what has our thought life been like? What are our behaviors like? What are the things that we've been doing? Like, is it reflecting the image of Christ? Or maybe we've been a part of some groups or programs that have been taken away from us, that that was our context where we were living for Jesus. And that's changed now. It's modified. Well, how do we be the church in a modified culture coming back as we phase in to our culture? Now, again, as we talk about the church and, and what, why we love it, and I believe it is so special, I believe it's because God's Spirit is evident in our lives is being displayed in action. That is what separates the church from any other type of large group gathering is God's spirit is within us. So we need to be reminded, remind ourselves that God's spirit is living in us to make a difference. From Pentecost Sunday, we see the start of God's spirit changing people's lives in an instant. And this still continues today, both in our church gatherings, but outside as we are the church, living and breathing in our lifestyle and in our contexts as well. In Acts 2, when, when Peter is preaching his first sermon, he's filled with the Holy Spirit, he's speaking with boldness. It says that the people listening, there was thousands of people, they were cut to the heart. And that is what God's Spirit does. He ministers to the exact area that we need healing where we need forgiveness, where we need restoration, and that is our heart. So when God's Spirit is flowing through us, it cuts to the heart of people exactly where they need it. So as we go out and be the church, God's Spirit is moving with us and working for us. And we are able to see and experience amazing stories of what God can do. Now, I want to share a story um, of, of, of a lady in our church, uh, Jamie Lesser. And she had a conversation with Kate over Zoom of just her experience with the body of Christ and how um, the people of our church, and this is specifically at Cheney Faith Center, but how they displayed God's love and how through the church has brought her back to a place of healing and a place of community and fellowship. And so um, the clip is about five minutes long. It's, it's over Zoom and the, uh, the audio goes in and out a couple of times, but hey, we're living in the tech world and I think we're all used to that, which is okay. But man, the message and the words that are shared in this story are very, very powerful. And so I want you to just um, intently listen to this story and um, then I'll come back and finish out a little bit more of this message. Okay. Well, hey everyone, this is Kate Postuma. I'm the women's pastor at Cheney Faith Center and I have my friend Jamie Lesser with me. Hey Jamie, nice to see you. 
Well, Mark and I first met Jamie about 12 years ago when she showed up to Cheney Faith Center as a college student. And then she was gone from Cheney Faith Center for a few years and now she's back in full force. And I would just love for her to be able to share a little bit of her story with us. So thank you, Jamie. Thank you for sharing with us. And the main thing that I wanna hear from you is why you love church so much. Okay, well, I'd love to share. Um, so yeah, I started, uh, I grew up in church with my family. And when I moved over um, to Eastern, um, or to Cheney, um, and went to Eastern, I started going to the Cheney Faith Center. And um, I loved it, but got caught up. Um, I attended for a couple of years and then got kind of caught up in the world's desires and um, ended up leading a life um, that was very consumed with like brokenness and sin. And um, that chapter in my life lasted about 10 years until I uh, came to, I experienced like the lowest point of my life. And um, in that time, there's a lot of decisions to be made, and it was very overwhelming. But I heard this uh, whisper, I guess, is what I can relate it, relate it to, but this whisper of encouragement to go back to Cheney Faith Center. And um, I was hesitant because I was very ashamed of everything that I had done, all the choices that I made. Um, but in the midst of that hesitation, that voice or that whisper was persistent and um, eventually led me to stepping back into Chain Faith Center. And um, I remember like when I first walked in, um, the only way I can describe it is peace, just God's peace um, covered me. And that was something that I never, um, I hadn't had in my life a long time. And um, so that was very profound. And then Kate, I remember you came up and greeted me and um, that interaction was so, um, I'll never forget it because it so much signifies to me how God embraces us, um, no matter what state we come to him in. And so, um, since then he's been really faithful in providing many more interactions like that to me and then surrounding my family with people in the body of Christ to support and uplift us. And, um, there's so many people that I could tell you stories of, but we'd be here for a long time. <laughs> I remember there was um, one morning that I um, was telling the kids that we're going to get ready for church and preparing them like we're going to go praise Jesus and we're going to go to class and play with our friends and with Claire Sue. And Dustin was like, with Nana Sue? <laughs> and I was like, oh, like it made my heart so happy because he, um, had felt the same way that I did with her. And when I see her, I just see Jesus's kindness and gentleness. And so for him to feel that way too was amazing. And I called my mom, um, who she uh, had heard of Clara Sue. And I uh, asked her if it was okay if the kids called her Nana. And she was like, absolutely. Like the more people surrounding my daughter and my grandchildren and my son-in-law, um, the more people in the body of the Christ who are surrounding them, the better. And um, this is coming from a mom and my dad who prayed for me to have a heart to know Christ for 10 years. I mean, my whole life, but really that last 10 years. And so now we got to talk and just how she's able to experience the fruition of that. And it's like, I just admire how much, um, she and my dad and then the people in her church were praying for me and uh, even though there was lots of times where it probably seemed impossible like they kept their faithfulness in christ and so that was um, that's something especially as a mom that i just i appreciate it so much and so um, i guess all that to say that i feel like god um, wanted me to experience his love in a tangible way, if that makes sense. I know. Mm -hmm. And um, he wanted me to be able to experience what real like love is um, from the church. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, it does. But I really am like a thousand percent uh, certain that's why he um, specifically called me back to CFC so that I could experience that. And um, 
And that's, I, yeah, I like get emotional thinking about it because um, since like day one, I feel like um, the church as a whole, but CFC, like the people, the body of Christ at CFC models God's love and grace so well. Man, I love what is said what Jamie said in her experience and, the, and the, true, the true love that Jesus was displayed through the people in our church. And so shout out to you all at, at, at CFC for just being a part of that and, and being used by God's spirit. Um, shout out to Claire Sue um, for just loving on our kiddos and on, on her family. And it's just amazing to see um, how God's church, the body of Christ, just loves people and truly, truly um, just brings that all together. And that's, that's why we love the church, right? It's because it's, it's the people that make up the church. And so we are what make a difference through his spirit when it comes to the church. Without that, we would just be a social club. Without God's spirit, we would just be simply like, oh, we're just hanging out. But God's spirit is what makes the difference. I want to share quickly in Ephesians chapter 3, uh, verses 8 through 12. And this is Paul talking to the church in Ephesus. Um, just the role of the church and, 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 what, and what we do. So it says this. Although I am less than the least of all the Lord's people, this grace was given to me to preach the Gentiles the boundless riches of Christ and to make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery for which ages past was kept hidden in God who created all things. His intent was that now, through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms, according to his eternal purpose that we have accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. In him and through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. See, the church, we, as the people of Christ, we have the opportunity to unravel the mysteries of God, which is the promised hope of Jesus, right? And through him, we can approach God with freedom and confidence. How cool is that? That we have that opportunity to be the church and to do that outwardly. And I love what it says also uh, in, in verse 10, that uh, we unfold the manifold wisdom of God to be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms. We're basically like declaring war on the enemy, like, you best watch out, Satan. We coming, the church is coming. And that is such a cool thing. Like we get to do that. We have the opportunity to do that outwardly 24 seven. That's why I love the church. And that's why I believe Christ is over Corona because there is nothing that will stop the church from moving, amen. There is nothing that will prevent it and prevent the love of Jesus being displayed outwardly. We get to do this. We get to move outwardly as the church, beyond buildings, beyond programs, and be a witness, an image bearer of Christ for those who need hope and freedom in Jesus. It reminds me of playing the game Kick the Can as a kid, where maybe some of your friends were in like the jail because they've been tagged and they've been captured. And the point of the game is to get to the can, to kick it over, to like beat the bad guys and to save all the prisoners. And if you've ever played the game and you're sneaking around, you're still in the game and you're sneaking through like the bushes or whatever by the house and you see the can, you're like, this is my moment. And you run and you kick it over and you're like, yeah, and everybody like in the jail area is like, yeah game over we won you're just like yes like it just feels so good right that's what we get to do as a church we get to go and display this amazing message of jesus outwardly and bring freedom to people who have been in bondage how cool is that right how cool is that that we have that opportunity and so that leads me into my last point and that's that we should be in awe of the church we have it good here we have it great here, and sometimes we can take for granted the things that we have as a church, the beautiful buildings and the chairs and the technology. Even in quarantine, we have it pretty good. I'll be on my couch on a Sunday flipping through different like YouTube channels of churches and just, just watching church, right? Just church surfing. But I had a conviction a few weeks ago because I would watch church service. I'd start like evaluating them and being like, oh, that worship was okay or man, they missed that cue, I didn't do that, or blah, blah, blah. And I started like just, my heart wasn't in the right place and I wasn't in awe 
of what was being done, that these churches were proclaiming the message of Jesus. I was missing it, right? So I think that as we start to phase into church, we need to have that check in our heart and our spirit to be in awe of the church, which is his people, to be in awe of what God's people are doing to display the message of Christ in so many creative ways. Well, this upcoming week, our reading devotional is in a study called Letters to the Church. It's by Francis Chan. It's based on a book that he's written, but he brings up a lot of good questions for us to reflect on and think on about like, man, have we lost the sacredness of church? Have we lost the meaning of church? Like, have we taken it for granted? And I want to read a little quote from one of the devotions that'll be coming up. I think it's in like day three of our reading, but he, but he says this. And when I was reading through it, I was like, whoo, Francis, you're hitting me hard, man. This is what he says. So in the church, rather than marveling at the incredible mystery that we are a part of God's body, we critique the leadership, the music, the programs, and anything else we can think of. We point out the flaws in our pastor's sermon with the same conviction we critique, we critique a movie star's acting or our favorite team's recent loss. Could it be that we are taking a sledgehammer to the temple in so doing? So strong words, but I think such poignant words for us in our culture. Have we taken for granted our church gatherings? Are we in awe of the church when we show up? Are we in awe of the church just 24-7? Because it's God's people. It's the body of Christ. It's about the people. And when we start to tear down people in the church, we're tearing down God's church. We're tearing down his holy temple. See, church is not a building a program, right? It is a collective of people moving in God's spirit to reveal the mysteries of Christ, the hope that he provides for a lost and hurting world. Let's live this out and show the world that Christ is over Corona because our church is thriving in every home, every workplace, every walk in our neighborhood, every little thing that we do because we are the church. We are the image bearers of Christ bringing the good news of the gospel to all. So before I end, I want to again put that question up to just reflect on how am I being the church? How am I being the church? Now I'm going to leave this question up and I'm just going to pray and I'm just going to leave it up for a little bit longer even after I pray and then the service is going to be essentially ending. Um, so I'm going to pray. Lord Jesus, we just humbly come before you and we even just praise you for what you've done in the church that since Pentecost, through your Holy Spirit, you have moved in miraculous ways and millions and millions of people have hope and freedom in you because of your spirit moving in people, in people, in every context, Lord. So we give you praise that it's never been closed, the church, that you have moved regardless of the situations. And Jesus, right now, we even just come and just we, we, we just repent. We say, Lord, we've taken for granted the church sometimes. We've taken for granted what we have, and we're sorry for that, Lord. And we want to humble ourselves so that we can be in awe of what you're doing in the church, be in awe of the greatness of who you are, Lord. So God, remind us the church is more than just a building. Remind us to be living in your Holy Spirit to live this out. And remind us to be in awe of the awesomeness of the church, the body of Christ, and what we're doing to live this message outwardly to a people who need it so badly. So God, we come before you, we give you thanks and praise. We pray this in your mighty, mighty name. Amen. So um, reflect on that question, how am I being the church? Also, if, if you wanna reach out to us and communicate with us, um, we have our, our, our text numbers that will sh also show up on the screen. You can text out to us that you just need to talk or that you'd like to know more about what it means to be a part of the body of Christ and to have a relationship with Jesus. You can text us. We'd love to um, just 
yeah, reach out to you and, and, and chat with you about that. So take some time to reflect on the question. And then also a reminder that um, we have that reading plan happening this week. It's live right now on our website. Um, the text will probably go out today as well. Um, so yeah, so just be a part of that and continue to just love the church and know that, that Christ is over everything, right? Christ is over our time and um, we just love that we can be the church together. So thanks so much. We'll see you soon.